on to tonight's presentation. So this, tonight's speaker is our very own Mina Harrible, who will be who is an ardent naturalist and traveler around the world in search of nature. She's been a member of the Cute Bird Club for almost 30 years, past president and current field trip leader. And she's shared many, many presentations about her travels. Um, we're hoping tonight to hear, without any technical difficulties, about her experiences and challenges observing unique desert fauna ranging from the endangered Indian, great Indian bustard, of which there's only 250 remaining in the world, to the extremely rare and elusive apex predator, the snow leopard. So, that was exciting. Please join me in a warm welcome for tonight's presenter, Nina. Last year I had a uh, lot of chance of traveling, not a lot of chance, I took a chance to travel a lot and uh, I happened to go to uh, several deserts, so one was when I was in India I went to Rajasthan and especially Jaisal Mehdi, which I'll talk about where it is and uh, that I had been thinking of going for the la last 40 years, finally I made it and then uh, another desert, I've, after coming to US, I went was uh, sand dunes of uh, Nebraska, which, which I'm not going to talk about because it is already, I have too many things to say about the other places I went. And you all know about Nebraska, so I thought I'll skip that. And uh, after that, uh, while I was in India and I was still thinking about something, somebody, a friend of mine told Meena, you should go to Ladakh. I said, like, I want to go to Ladakh since la last 40 years, no, 50 years, and I wanted to do a trek from Lama Yeru to Padam, which never happened, so finally I said, if not trek, at least visit it. So that's how I uh, did lots of visiting desert, so Ladakh was a cold desert, while uh, Rajasthan was a hot desert. So, and Nebraska was temperate kind of desert. So, I'll talk to you about that now. So, uh, in India, here is India, and I hope most of you know how the India uh, got to this place where it is. It was part of Gondwana land initially, uh, joined to South America, Africa, and uh, Australia, and then it split up and started moving north up here, and finally it hit the Asian plateau. And uh, so even now, the land is rising every year, something like one centimeter to five centimeters, depending on the area. So geography is very interesting as it hits the uh, Tibetan plateau, and also it hit Asian, pla uh, Asian plateau here in the desert region. So uh, its uh, habitat is very similar to desert region of that further area. I'm so used to using the... Okay, so here I visited... So before I go to the places I visited... <coughs> so uh, I visited several places here. Uh, we landed in uh, Jaipur, which is uh, just near the uh, dot you see. Mm, it's not doing very good thing. I don't like it. Okay, so uh, near that, uh, there is a uh, leopard sanctuary called Jhalna, which used to be Maharaja of uh, Jaipur's uh, private hunting area. So that uh, area has been conserved for several thousand years, several hundred years. So uh, there are something like 20 or 30 leopards in small area. So it's very easy to see, but we didn't see anything. And then we went to another grassland area. As you go, so all this Rajasthan is all this area you see here. This this part is Rajasthan. As you go from east to west, it becomes drier and drier. So initially here it was a scrub jungle, and here it is grasslands. This is the grassland of Taj Chapar, and uh, where you find. Uh, it's called Black Buck Sanctuary. 
And then I went to, uh, it's, now it is called Sanctuary, but actually it was not a Sanctuary in the past. It's called Jorbi. I'll talk about Jorbi when I uh, show you some specific slides about Jorbi. And then we went to uh, a place called Keaton. In this whole, whole surrounding region, demoiselle cranes come from uh, Asia and uh, northern part of Europe, and they uh, winter in this area. And then from there I went to des totally desert where there is sand dunes and things like that with some valleys of green valleys. And that's a, called a Great uh, Desert National Park which is famous for Great Indian Busters. So this is the habitat I was talking about. In this earlier it was mixed kind of grassland and scrub habitat and then it is totally grassland habitat with few trees and then in, in uh, desert region where only where there is a, a little bit of water is there it is green and then it would be totally sand dunes or something habitat like this. Um, people here are very simple people I mean I'm talking about people mean I talk about people from the village and other areas, not town people. Town people are as good as anybody else anywhere here. And uh, so uh, this was our uh, guy called Anwar Khan, very young man, maybe less than uh, 25 or something, but very knowledgeable, knowledgeable and very uh, smart guy. And these are the local women who generally most of them have this kind of dresses. And these, these were mourning somebody's death. So they had some kind of ceremony here. And most of the population lives around where there is fresh water available. Uh, this I put it here to show you uh, how in some, some parts of India, uh, tea, is, tea is given. It is called Kullad uh, Chai. Kullad is this uh, mud pots made of uh, mud. And they give you chai in that. People think the taste taste for that is very different from that you, if you drink from the cups. And uh, these are disposable, these get recycled and again uh, they make some more pots of this kind. Uh, the Rajasthan is very uh, interesting place. Uh, there were lots of Maharajas who lived in uh, different different regions and in the big towns, there are big havelis. Havelis means there will be big houses, much bigger than this uh, area here. And those havelis used to be uh, sculpted with variety of uh, uh, beautiful sculptures and mostly made of mud and things like that. And otherwise, villagers lived in, uh, even now live in a, such a small place, uh, which is made of hut, I mean hut made of mud and surrounded by mud and they sleep outside like this in the, this bit because there are not much of many uh, predators or anything. They are also very religious, uh, mostly in uh, eastern part they are all Hindus but if you go to west then there are a lot of Muslims which is bordering Pakistan and culturally very very diverse. They have variety of dances and variety of cultures, handicrafts and things like that. So it's not just visiting uh, for wildlife, but it's also interesting for uh, culture and uh, other things. So th these are the modes of transportation there. Like uh, poor people have a cow or something, I mean a, a bull or something that will be attached to a cart and it's drawn and very sunny area they have these kind of carts. Uh, modern guys have uh, motorbikes and uh, cars. So we, we hired one of these cars and went around traveling. But when you are in uh, national parks and things like that, there you have to have specified guides. It is compulsory to have a specified guides. So, uh, now birds are not according to any family or something, but just 
randomly I have put like uh, whatever I felt is interesting. Uh, so these are great Indian busters. They are as tall as me and big wingspan of six feet or something like that. And uh, uh, they used to be when I left India. Somebody called Dr. Uh, Asan Rahmani was studying. At that time, there were something like 5,000 birds and found it mostly in uh, Rajasthan and some part of southern India. But now, they have come to only 250 birds. Just in 30 years, their population has reduced so much. And uh, only Desert National Park is the location where they have highest population. Uh, so these are endangered species. Uh, I don't know. Rajasthan's habitat has changed so much because uh, of the water irrigation now. Uh, things which were desert have become now fields, so they are losing their habitats. Uh, Greater Hukul Lark, which is not, uh, if you think of uh, universally, uh, all, all world wise, they are not very rare birds. But for Indians, this is a rare, rare species because it is only found in westernmost part of uh, Rajasthan. And not many are there, quite few uh, of them you find them there. And desert is also famous for grouses. There are three species of sand grouse found. And this, the one we saw was mostly the rufous uh, uh, sand grouse. They, they come in huge groups to drink water. They, they are otherwise always in the dry areas. They come early mornings around 9 o'clock. That's what their time is. And again in the evening around 6, uh, six o'clock or just before the dusk, they come to drink water. And uh, th initially, they start coming down one or two. Uh, you can see here, this, this guy is drinking water. This is a uh, male. Female is quite different looking. Female is uh, very much patterned. She looks very much like the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. And then they keep coming, coming. And we saw something like 500, more than 500 coming down to drink water. And when they take off, you can see the uh, rufous belly and their dark wings. Uh, another desert bird is called cursor or corsor. And uh, this is cream colored corsor. Uh, in India, there are three types of corsors one is uh, cream colored, the other one is Indian corsor, and the third one is Jerdan's corsor. Jordan's cursor, now they think it is almost extinct. It was thought extinct uh, somewhere in 1980s. Uh, one of the villagers found, uh, uh, local villagers know where they are. People were searching for it in the daytime, but those courses, Jordan's courses come out only at night. So it's very hard to find them, otherwise they're in the thickets, in the spiny thickets, so very hard to find them. And, uh, so you can see why they are matching, how well they match with the surrounding background. And as the sun sets, this was a sunset time, and the color changes, of grass changes color, and this also looks beautiful, reddish color. Uh, Trepidate fringes also are rare to India, but not other, elsewhere. They come, um, during winter months only, and they spend their time in the... Okay, come on, come on. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes it boots up quickly and sometimes it doesn't. These are called rufous tail larks. And uh, rufous tail larks uh, are also desert species found only in Gujarat and Rajasthan. Otherwise, they're common in, as you go west towards uh, Pakistan or even I think up to Morocco, you can find them. 
this was one beautiful bird sitting in the late evening but otherwise they look like this colored with the rufous tail it's hard to understand what they are finding in this area uh, this is there are quite a few species of larks and uh, pipits found in this area this is bimaculated uh, lark or, or old name is canandra lark it's quite a big lark with a big uh, back patch on their throat i go back and it comes back uh, uh, these are called black crown fin uh, finch larks they are neither finch nor lark so they are called finch larks uh, and uh, they are common in the grasslands on the dry sandy areas you like to see birds twice uh, this is a, a indian bush lark there are bush larks singing larks so many kinds of larks uh, and th these are fairly common but they are found even in deccan parts of uh, india and other locations uh, i just wrote this as shorter lark there are so many species of shorter larks are there like greater short uh, shorter lark lesser shorter shorter lark huge shorter lark so there are variety of species so this is one of the short shorter lark you have to look for the front and other parts of it uh, desert meteors are also very common in this desert area and sometimes they are also found in other parts of india too uh, this is a female and male in non breeding plumage looks like this but if you go not in ladak you will see he looks so different and this bird i think is one of the male larks which has totally lost his uh, this but i couldn't find any pictures which are similar to this so i'm not 100% sure of this species and this is a bdr uh, called isabellian bdr which doesn't have any eye line and they come from uh, mostly western um, they are called middle east but for us western asia uh, and uh, they have very beautiful birds and they have nice song and there are a lot of black and white uh, btrs of they are also called jacks and there is so much of variation and so much of differences in that this particular one is called variable jack which has five forms so and which looks very similar to other species so it's very uh, difficult to identify this species no sound is coming there was supposed to be sound co coming with this but there is no sound uh, these are francolins or uh, uh, we used to call them partridges they are partridges and uh, they early morning they keep calling so loudly they are all over in the grasslands or in the uh, thickets like this uh, early morning this guy was uh, sunning himself but in the temperature was pretty cold out there uh, then these are the demoiselle cranes they are very similar to similar looking to uh, common cranes but they have a beard long beard and uh, crest here and here you see a uh, stilt and in the back here you see a green wing teal but asian green wing teal and uh, they are generally in the family groups you can see here this one has got a blackish eye so it's a young bird first year bird while these are adult parents and while they are standing they just simply for some reason or the other they just lift themselves up and jump and up and down so this one is jump much higher and uh, this place uh, there is a farmer called sevakram who feeds them with 
grains. So there is a big courtyard and he puts lots of uh, uh, seeds of uh, some seeds like sorghum and things like that. They come to feed on that and here it looks like they are doing namaz. But one of the bird is looking up and saying like, who, who all is doing namaz? Uh, but any slight differences, disturbances, they all raise their head and look around. And if more disturbance, everybody is up and then they fly off, making so much of noise. It's very similar to sandal cranes which we watched. There are several species of bagglers found in India. And this is common bagler, one of the cutest birds. This is bird of a song sparrow size. And when they are in a group, they all sit together, uh, sitting together in early morning to conserve heat. And they are very common in dry deserts. And this is double the size of that other bird called uh, large grey babbler. They are very, very noisy. If they are around, you will see hear them kaya, 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 continuously. <laughs> and uh, this is a jungle babbler which is found in almost all kinds of habitats, but also in the scrub jungle. Uh, these are also uh, noisy birds. Uh, they generally are supposed to be found in a group of seven, so they are called seven sisters. Uh, so the reason for they call seven sisters is they are talking so much. But in Hindi, it is called Saad Bhai, seven brothers. Uh, in fact, my group in Bombay, uh, Bombay with Bombay Natural Disease Society, we were seven people. We used to go together, so we were called jungle babblers. Uh, variety of uh, beaters are found, but we found only one species. This is a green bee eater. And instead of eating a bee, he was catching my beautiful uh, Indian uh, cabbage white butterflies, which were fairly common at that point. Uh, this is a large grey shrike. Uh, large grey shrike migrates from uh, north, but some of them breed in uh, Ladakh and Kashmir region. There was a sound along with this, which you don't hear. Uh, this is a uh, so interesting part of, of, you see this background is all uh, blurred out, right? So this is a grassland, and in grassland, forest department has put these kinds of sticks everywhere along the drive. So birds can get perches to sit. And so Rajasthan department has done everywhere in all the sanctuaries like this. And he had got a praying mantis. You can see here praying mantis was praying him, like, please don't care, eat me. But he pulled his leg out and ate him. <laughs> uh, there are variety of drumbos also found in India, and this is called black drumbo. Uh, black drumbo is easily identified by having a white. Uh, uh, it's called uh, in India we call it uh, uh, like if if you say somebody is beautiful, you you don't want them to look bad, right? So that's uh, there is a word for it in India, but I don't know what is it equivalent in English. But that's what they have. And, uh, but in, in this region, mostly black drongos are found. And uh, this is uh, myna. There are quite a few species of mynas. This is called bank myna. Uh, if you, you are traveling in the train uh, in Rajasthan, and wherever you stop at the stations, you'll see them in hundreds. So there's a big flock of them flying in Jodhbe Sanctuary. Uh, these are uh, rose-winged parakeets. Uh, this this particular pair was in so much in love with each other. Uh, this male male has a rose ring and the female doesn't have a, that ring, rose ring. And 
he was continuously talking to her and uh, speaking with her. And then there are five species of ibises. One of them is white ibis there, but it is called Indian white ibis. Uh, and this is called red-headed uh, ibis. We also get glossy ibis and uh, several uh, another two species from there. Uh, these are uh, lots of species of dogs found. If you see in the center here, this is reddish colored wings it has. It's called red colored, I, it should be colored red dove, but it is called red colored dove. Because it has a collar, but it is reddish winged. So, but red colored dove means, it, you, you think it has got a red color. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and this is blue rock pigeon, which is native bird, and not a feral pigeon, what you get here. It's really native, and it breeds in the native, uh, uh, in the rocky areas of the uh, hills there. And these are Eurasian colored dove, which have become now common in many parts of uh, US. I think Rochester has a group there. And this is laughing dove. Uh, laughing doves are also found across in Africa and other places. Of course, this is a iconic bird and it's a national bird of uh, uh, India. And uh, this is peacock. This, I, I think somehow in this slide it doesn't show that beautiful. But when I see in my uh, uh, computer, it looks beautiful, blue here. And wherever there are uh, water bodies, Lots of shorebirds come. Anybody can identify what this is? It's rough one. Huh? Oh, you're seeing. <laughs> <laughs> I was seeing the same screen. <laughs> yeah, these are rough and reefs. Uh, uh, initially, they were called rough and reefs. I think now they're called just rough. Uh, but females will have shorter bill and they're slightly smaller. Uh, males have reddish bill and longish beak and beautiful red legs while females will have yellowish legs and they were in hundreds everywhere wherever there was water. Uh, this is equivalent of our spotted sandpiper, it's common sandpiper which shakes its tail like uh, our sandpiper and this is black winged still and not black necked still. Uh, in the US, you get black neck stilt, which is having a black on the neck. And uh, these are called uh, bar headed geese. Here they were wintering in this season. And also, you see here uh, little greets. And uh, there is a red crested pochard's female. There is a coot here. Eurasian coot is different from good here. And then during again uh, uh, winter months, we get lots of sparrows from uh, West Asia. And these are all house sparrows. And uh, on the top you see starlings. These are rosy starlings. And they all come during early mornings to take bath and drink water. Uh, so they were coming in hundreds, but some of these uh, sparrows may also have something called tree sparrow, sin sparrow, and Arab sparrow. We found quite a few, of, uh, I mean like three or four of each in these groups. And this is the rosy uh, pastor, or sometimes it is called rosy starling, uh, or it is called rosy starling, it was called earlier rosy pastors. And they have beautiful, rosy color. This is not breeding plumage, but in breeding plumage, it becomes real beautiful rosy color. And uh, wings are all glossy, uh, greenish blue. And they, they enjoy taking baths so much in this uh, water here. Uh, now, 
now we are coming to raptors. This is called black wing kite or black shouldered kite. Now it is called as it is called, and they also have the habit of hunting like um, harriers in the evening. So this is a juvenile of the same bird. They hunt in the evening. They will be hovering at some location and looking this way and that way, and uh, finally they catch goals and things like that. So here is a beautiful plumage guy looking at uh, something else. Then uh, winter months are good time to look for migrant eagles. Steppy, we call it steppy, and people here call it step. So I don't know whatever is the correct pronunciation. Uh, but these eagles, they come in hundreds. Uh, Jorbi, which I'll talk about a little later, there they could be seen in something like 500 eagles or something like that in a day. And they have so much of variation in their plumage. These are the slight pictures. And uh, they are very similar to other species like greater spotted eagle and lesser spotted eagle. So it's very hard to See, here this looks like almost like golden eagle. And here a pair, you can see a male is having reddish eye, female is having darker colored eye. Uh, they are getting ready to nest in some of the trees there. Then we have lots of uh, tawny eagles. Tawny eagles were not as common as uh, stuffed eagles, but they were fairly uh, common. You could see quite a few of them. They are this tall, like uh, two feet tall uh, birds when they are sitting. And then there was an the imperial eagle, uh, which we saw only in flight. Uh, but that was the only one imperial eagle we saw. But there, are, there would be few more coming. We were there in November. And sometimes roads are very sandy and difficult to drive. Even with four wheel drive, you can't drive. Uh, you need local guys who know how to drive in sandy area, like how we drive in Slonia. Uh, these are long legged buzzards. There are several species of buzzards found here. This is the same downlet buzzard, it's showing how long I am. And this is a short toed snake eagle. They are specialized eating in snakes. Uh, we also get several species of uh, harriers. This is called Montagu's harrier, which is very common at that place. Then we also get hen harrier, and then we also get pallid harrier. I told you about Jorbir, I will talk about it later. So this is Jorbir, where, uh, see, as I said, like most of the people in Rajasthan are Hindus, so they don't like to kill anything, and cows are God to them. So after the cows are dead, they can't do anything with that, though some, some local farmers might use the hide for uh, making uh, leather boots, but most of them, they leave it as it is. But since, uh, I don't know, this, this phenomenon is like last 20 years or something like that. They started dumping all of them from all over Rajasthan in this location called Jorbi. And because they had been putting so many things, lots of vultures, uh, vultures are also becoming scarce in India. Like once upon a time, from my house in Bombay, I could see, uh, 50 or 60 vultures, white backed vultures circling. But now we don't see any of those vultures at all. And uh, so in this location, all the vultures, eagles, everybody come here to feed on this carcass, whatever is left over of that. So it's like uh, Laura was showing that thing. There will be thousands of them circling in the sky. Uh, this, and as I said, like 
forest department has put them purges of these big trees. So they use very often these kinds of things and sit there and uh, hang around, do their thing. Because food is easily available. So here you can see uh, different species of vultures as well as eagles all sitting together on one tree. Uh, this vulture is known as Neophon or Egyptian vulture. Uh, they come from uh, west, west or Middle East. Middle East for uh, Western people, and for us it is west of west. And uh, the, the dark-colored bird you see is a juvenile, and they they winter mostly in India. These are Eurasian griffon vultures. Uh, those are also very tall birds, like. Two, two or two and a half feet tall and they hang around together in their own groups and here you see a whole bunch sitting early morning sunning themselves. This is a scenarius vulture which mostly is found up to Pakistan but nowadays they seem to have started uh, wandering around other parts of India too. Uh, now they have been located in a variety of places. So it was sitting with this neophron vulture, but this typical decided that no, it wants to sit at the same location where this vulture is sitting. So they had, both of them had a fight. And this is a red-headed vulture which looks like a uh, uh, turkey vulture, but uh, they have a very big white wing, uh, white patch on the, their belly. Unfortunately, this was sharp focus, but it lost its part of the wing. This bird, I don't have to tell anybody what it is. Uh, it is one of my favorite birds. Uh, Dr. Salim Ali used to call this bird as Mina's bird. <laughs> this is a. Uh, spotted owlet. Spotted owlets are fairly common everywhere again. And uh, they nest in the holes. Uh, this, I was trying to do HDR using sandwich uh, stacking of the pictures. So, do you see the difference here? I don't know. Then, kestrel. This is a male kestrel, it's the Eurasian kestrel. And uh, male kestrels also have greyish head, but these kestrels are slightly bigger than our uh, kestrels here. And this is a female, very similar to our kestrel here. And there are other species of falcons. Uh, we, we do get uh, peregrine falcons, but this is Laga falcon, again it's migrant, migrant from, from uh, Eurasia, north. Uh, it's bigger than, it's almost size of a peregrine falcon. You can see his uh, uh, thigh, how thick and how powerful he looks. He took off at one point. This I'm not 100% sure, but it has all the characters of Seker fal falcon, which is again uh, mostly Chinese and Tibetan bird, which migrate occasionally to uh, India, and they come to Rajasthan. So this is one of the uh, birds uh, we saw. And we spent a lot of time trying to confirm its identity, but we are still not 100% sure. Then we come to some of the mammals here. This was a monkey city in the uh, Jalna uh, sanctuary. And here monkeys are doing their monkey business. <laughs> Whatever they One is eating something, one is doing something else. One is relaxing his legs, sitting, swinging his legs. And then these are black bucks. These are antelopes, not, not deer, because they have a, um, an, uh, antlers, sorry, they have horns, horns which are, as they grow every year, their 
Like, uh, then the ring, so based on the rings, you can say how old these birds are. Uh, here, uh, female is with the doe. Uh, there were quite a few does, and we saw one just born doe. You can still see his umbilical cord. You can see it here. And his skin is still wet. And yet, he was just born. Seeing us, he was just running after his mom. And you see them sauntering around in that area. Black box were so beautiful. I freaked up. I don't know how many thousand pictures I have. <laughs> so I want to show you as much as possible. <laughs> I wanted them fighting, but uh, I didn't get. By the time I was ready, they stopped fighting. This guy is running away. And this is another antelope called Nilgai or Blue Bull. It's a translation of Nilgai, actually. And uh, he's a tall, uh, tall, big guy. He is just standing and waiting, as a, uh, asking me to take his portrait. But then he said, like, oh no, wait. I'll go closer to this bush and take another picture. <laughs> and here, this bush you see, you see small red fruits here. It's called bay or zizifus. And there were a lot, very big thorny trees. And it's very hard to pluck these fruits. But they were everywhere in fruits. And we ate so much of these. This used to be one of my favorite school in the school recess time, we used to eat these fruits there. And uh, sold by a person who was sitting outside my school. Uh, this is a female of that male uh, guy. And then we saw some other mammals. This is Chinkara, another, uh, uh, another antelope which has got a very small horn, and it's small, like two and a half feet tall uh, animal, which easily gets lost in the grassland. And then, here you see, you see, what do you see here? Cat, yeah. So it's got a jungle cat, which uh, easily can get inside this grass and get lost. So it was being harassed by Two Montego's harrier here. And uh, this is a desert fox. We saw few of them, but not much of photographs we could get. And then there were so many sunset pictures with the birds. So I said I'll put a couple of them. And sunsets were always beautiful. So now I'll go to shift. We'll move to Ladakh. Okay, so after that, in June, I went to Ladakh. Okay, so while it is loading up, I'll tell you. Uh, so Ladakh is a high altitude desert. And you can see here, uh, it's most of these are snow-covered mountains and many huge lakes. This is a Tibet, uh, Tibet border. Tibet is part of China now, anyway. So here is the border, and uh, this is the beautiful, biggest salt lake in uh, Asia. And there is Tsongurari, another lake here. Here we visited several places. Uh, we flew into the lake. Uh, you could see this range is called Sasan Canyon Range, and beautiful mountains up here up to 25,000 feet high. Mm -hmm. yeah. And from there, via another village called Sakti, we went to Pengong Lake. And Pengong Lake has most beautiful colors in the area. And then we went further down to another place called Han Lake. Uh, Han Lake is a, now has become famous for its observatory. Though there is nobody in the observatory because everything is done remote from somewhere in Bangalore. Uh, 
from Hanle we went to Tso Murari and then Tsokar. And then when we went, went to Zanskar Valley, a place called Lingshan. So uh, Ladakh is famous for its beautiful landscapes. So this is a view of a single from Singalala Ridge, which is no Singalala Ridge. There is a Singalala Ridge somewhere else in uh, Sikkim, and this ridge is around seventeen thousand feet high. So we passed several passes which were more than sixteen to seventeen thousand feet high. Uh, this was our guide, uh, Rigzil, and we stayed mostly in the homestays because there are no, there, there are now tourism has become a, a problem here in this area, but uh, we stayed mostly in homestays away from the crowd, um, and this was our homestays. Um, this woman was uh, showing off her possession of these all cooking vessels. And uh, people are very happy all, all the time. None of them seem to be angry, always smiling at you, and always happy. Habitat is so rugged, you don't find anything. Most of the places it, it is like this. I, but only in the river valleys, where there is a river, you can see some greenery and people uh, inhabit those areas. And this is, this is a choka. It's an interesting lake. Half of it is freshwater lake, half of it is saltwater lake. Oops, I went back. And people live in simple houses made of, uh, they make their own bricks. You can see here, oh, sorry. I'll go back. Never mind, I'll go ahead. But they make their own bricks and make houses and they are mostly farmers or grazers. They have, some of them have thousands of sheep and uh, they also have a very nice culture and uh, lots of uh, woolen goods and things are made by, by them. And then there were lots of beautiful kids. This, this, room, this small kid up here, she was so happy seeing us. She always wanted to be with us, and she loved my sleeping bag. She would go inside and sleeping bag and sleep there. <laughs> and uh, this, I thought it was very interesting. This used to be our letterbox. Even now, uh, Ladakh has lots of these letterboxes. In, in Bombay and all, they are all gone now. Uh, this, and these kids know English. They speak in English. Uh, they learn English. And, this is a Tibetan, uh, they had bread, it was very interesting, uh, it's soft but very interesting and it's kind of stew, Tibetan stew. Now here I'm going to go fast because I'm just going to show you some scenery for some of the things. Uh, we went to different locations, so this is Sindhu Ghat, a place called Sindhu, this is Indus River or in India it is called Sindhu. So this uh, rises somewhere in uh, Ladakh, and then it flow, flows into Pakistan. So Pakistan is basically, uh, population is basically around this river. Uh, this is Sasar Kandri, uh, one of the highest mountains in this range. Uh, this is view from Shay Shay was also a good place for birding. This was from Sakti, from my room, when I looked out early morning, this was a vision. And from Sakti, we went along these uh, uh, valleys, crossed the valley at Changla to go to other place. And this was a view from Changla, that same mountain range which we saw from my room. This is a Changla Pass. Soka. I mean, uh, uh, Pengong. Pengong Tso, is, Tso means lake actually. It's so beautiful, colors vary so much. So here it is turquoise blue, and here deep blue, and somewhere else it is some other blue. So within short distances, you'll see lots of beautiful blues.
and probably on the other side what you are saying is China. So yes, I am showing you China too. I think those peaks are in China. This is so called, uh, I am showing you quickly some slides as I go around it. Uh, so it's a um, panoramic view of how I turn around and see the thing. So all these bushes you see, these are the most common green bushes which you will see in all dry mountains. It's, these are called uh, Karagana bushes or Karagana uh, species plant. And then when we went to Zanskar Valley, Zanskar Valley, the road to Zanskar Valley is through towering mountains and where the river is there they have cut a path, uh, road across and mountains were straight like this, like at 90 degrees height. And this is one of the views of the Zanskar River Valley. Uh, this, this slide I like because you see the formation of here, geological formation is so beautiful. The way the land rose and how the formation took place. I, I can't talk so too much about geology because I don't have time, but it's beautiful. And this is the Lingshan village in Zanskar Valley and it was surrounded by more than 2,000 feet tall mountains. I wonder how somebody found this place and it has a monastery which is 2,000 years old. So you wonder like how did they go there? Uh, and what, very often uh, this part of Tibet, this is a part of Tibet, but a lot of people came from Lhasa when there was a Chinese war and they settled in this area too. Uh, this is the iconic bird of this area. Uh, in India, there are very few uh, uh, black neck cranes, but all over around about 10,000 birds are there, and these are considered one of the endangered species. And uh, these birds, interestingly, migrate from north western part of the Himalaya to Bhutan. So people go to Bhutan to see these birds in winter months. Uh, it was hunting in the uh, marshes there and found a fish. Uh, then Himalayan snowcock, as you uh, read the name snowcock, so it is found only above snow level, like above 15, 16,000 feet. And uh, these are quite big birds. We, we could hear them too, but I couldn't record because too much of traffic of, uh, down the road. And this is another snowcock, which is Tibetan snowcock, which was more than half a mile away from us. But this is all I could get the picture of it. Chikars, or we call it chakor. Uh, and these were common between 14 to 16,000 feet and uh, especially in uh, some valleys they were fairly common. In some other valleys they were not there. Uh, this is a Tibetan lark. In, uh, in, in India they are found only in Hanle or further south. Uh, but in Tibet if you go they are fairly common. This is a red. It's interesting. I, I, I found like a lot of birds in Himalaya have this pink color or reddish color. I don't know why. Evolutionarily, what is the importance of that color there? Uh, but this is uh, red-fronted grosfinch. Even in that part of uh, Ladakh, they are very rare. And we were lucky. So I sat there to photograph it. First, initially, it was like far away and it wouldn't come closer to us and then it came slowly hopping closer and closer 
closer and closer. <laughs> and finally, he was so close, I had to reduce my uh, zoom to like 300 mm. Like he was just next to me. I said, like, okay, stop it now, don't come any closer. And just before he flew, he said something to me, like, he made some noise just before he flew over my head. Like, I don't know what he was telling me. <coughs> this is called mountain chester, which are very, very common everywhere. Okay, uh, Ladakh doesn't have really trees. Uh, but a lot of these trees which you see them, they are mostly planted. And some willows are there, but not otherwise big tree. So this, these guys uh, nest in those kinds of trees. And it's called Chif Chaf because it keeps calling Chif Chaf, Chif Chaf, Chif Chaf. And he's such a small bird, but you can hear him long distances, like winter winds. And this is the articles leaf warbler. They had migrated south during winter months, but he was uh, nesting in this area. And this guy also, I sat for an hour or something. He came so close to me, I had to zoom down to get his picture. And he has a nice song too. All these songs are not being played, so I can't help you. <laughs> This is called robin eccenter because European robin has a color similar to this. So this has become a robin eccenter. And this is a brown eccenter, which was not very common. And this, Steve, you should identify it. Is, what, is, what do you think it is? I have written the name, sorry. <laughs> common term, they nest in this area too. They nest in these kinds of uh, uh, islands, small islands. And these are great crested grebes' nests. They nest in this uh, floating nest in uh, Tsokar, Tsomurari, and uh, uh, Pagongso. This, this bird everybody knows, but he has, his horn is slightly shorter than the horn you get here. And they were so busy, I don't know what they were finding in that sandy thing. They were busily running around, so they wouldn't sit at one location for some time. You, you can see his horn, tight, tiny bit of horn. Uh, this is called ground tit. Uh, they nest in the grounds, they hang around in the ground. So on the mounds, they make a hole inside. And they're supposed to, they're known to make up to three feet hole to nest. So, and as you, you can see, there are so many rocks and all. So when he's digging, sometimes he has to bring out the big rock out and throw it out. Uh, here he is throwing the thing out, like kicking out from his uh, leg. And I told you, I showed you desert weed here in Rajasthan. Now he looks like, like this, in breeding plumage. He's up in north and he's breeding. And here he's coming with the food for his mate. Uh, then uh, there are hobbies. This is called Eurasian hobby. And these were being harassed by uh, magpies and crow, carrion crows. Black-billed magpies are uh, found all over the world. This is a beautiful citrine uh, wagtail, but this wagtail loses its color later in the season. And this is a white wagtail, uh, which is found throughout India, which they were nesting. It's a coot, I said, like, has a knob on the top, on his head. This is different from the coot you find. And there are several red stars available. Uh, this is a black red star. And this is called 
This is called White Wing Red Star now, but in the past it was called Glunden Stutz Red Star. So imagine how, how to pronounce it. And uh, this is the female of that one. And this is the hoopo. Hoopos generally nest in the trees, but here they were nesting in the culvert between the stones and the holes. Uh, this is uh, Chinese ruby throat. Earlier it was lumped together as a Siberian ruby throat, but now it has become separate species. Uh, at one place where I was watching for it, several times he sat in front of me, but I never could get a picture. All I could get was this. So I thought like that was the end of it. But at another location, he sat in front of me and signed, and also came very close to me to uh, photograph him. This is called Twite. Twite is very similar to red poles. I mean, it's the same group as red poles. And uh, they also have something, song very similar to red, red poles. All songs you couldn't hear in this. Uh, there are four species of corvids. This is a carrion crow, found only in uh, Ladakh for India, but elsewhere it is common in Europe. Uh, common raven. Uh, or Asian raven, I, I think all now ravens are, I don't know, they have been separated, I am confused. And this is the <coughs> yellow bill tug, and this is red bill tug. Some people call it tough, so whatever you want. Okay, so I have to rush faster. Uh, so these are ruddy shell ducks which breed in this area. Uh, and there were two dozens of these, and they saw us and so ran away and sat on this island together. This is Blanford's finch, mountain finch, found only again above 16,000 feet. Uh, this is a lesser gray shade tribe. How do you distinguish? by its pinkish breast. See how beautiful pinkish breast. These were also uncommon there. This is a uh, great rose finch. This bird I haven't identified. These uh, barreted goose were breeding there. This is Brandt's Brandt's mountain finch or black-headed mountain finch. Uh, these were fighting with another finch, I'll show you later. This is a Eurasian skylark. Uh, this uh, black winged snow finch are also known as Tibetan snow finch. And uh, Brandt's mountain finch were fighting so much for the nesting habitat. This is, we saw a long legged buzzard down in Rajasthan. Now here we are seeing mostly up, upland buzzard, which was very common everywhere. What is this bird now? <laughs> no, I don't laugh. Look at its whitish tail. It's called hill pigeon, which almost looks very similar to uh, uh, blue rock pigeon. Then, what is this bird? Anybody? Golden eagle. Golden eagle. They were nesting there. <laughs> and another griffon vulture, it's called Himalayan griffon vulture, which has got whitish on the wing underside. This is bearded vulture or lammer deer, which also nests in the higher mountains. They throw their prey down to break their from the height to break their bones. Yeah, they find a rocky place and they throw the things down. And then we saw, uh, these are Tibetan bulls. We saw five of them. Can you see anything here? It's a Palasis fishing cat, which is very rare to see, but now here, here it's become common because then everyone knows the location. So people wait for it to see. Uh, Tibetan gazelles, again found only in this area in uh, Sikkim. These are 
or mountain goats or blue, uh, blue sheep or bharats and they are such a swift uh, uh, swift animals and they are so sure footed on a steep mountains i'll tell you a story i hope it won't take 5 minutes this is another aragal uh, uh, another sheep called argali which has when it is grown up it haunts turn around like this a uh, tibetan fox a pair of tibetan fox chick and uh, chicks i'm saying <laughs> pups and there were lots of wolves all in all this desert area these are called mountain wolves and these are the prey for all these animals which we we have been seeing okay so this this uh, guys were making a hole there this is a mountain uh, this is a pika mountain pika there is a himalayan pika also found then you have a large mammal called kiams or wild ass these are tibetan wild ass as soon as they see you they run sometimes they think okay they can feed who cares and this guy laughed me <laughs> showing the all his teeth this guy i think is the most comfortable guy uh, this is uh, himalayan marmot this kind of like uh, uh, meerkats and watcher up and this is another species which is found only in zanskar region it's called long tailed uh, marmot and he has much darker coat and he has a longer tail uh, there were beautiful flowers particularly riam is supposed to be very some riam species are so beautiful riam nobile is one of the most beautiful flowers in that area okay now i am coming to the uh, peak of my talk now okay so it's nine part now okay <laughs> it's already <laughs> yeah it's already uh, um, so this is the common rose finch uh, and i was looking at this serin but my friend was looking at something else she was looking at this so we saw this bharats moving around here and you can see the steep mountain you see uh, there is a ledge out here you look at that ledge there was nothing there so we were watching and then i decided we were supposed to go down and walk around that place but for some reason i decided we we'll walk up the hill and go other side so we did that and when we came back to our uh, rest house which was like 5 minutes from where we were Uh, a guy who was making brick on the lower side near the road opposite this place he came up he was a little bit scared so he asked like what happened he said like i saw a leopard leopard eating one of these guys we said like what he said like it happened just 20 minutes ago mm -hmm. while i was looking at siri the and so i called my friend to look at siri at that exactly at that time the leopard jumped down from that top portion and these bharats were somewhere down and he chased those leopard uh, these bharats all the way down to the well, uh, there's a river here to the valley and got hold of one of them these guys were having lots of babies so must have got a baby or i don't know a mom so you can see so many babies with them and so he said like this happened just few minutes ago so we immediately ran we said like oh we should go and see he told us like that uh, leopard took the prey up that valley so we went there we went to that valley and looked around nothing could be seen and uh, so after an hour rigsin said like i'll go and check again if uh, i see so he went down to different locations and then he came back to sit and smoke in one of the places where we we had seen this that guy had seen the leopard 
He was smoking and suddenly this leopard twisted its tail. Mm -hmm. And he ran back to us. We, we were in our uh, uh, room and from our room we could see this area but this rock was coming right in front of us. So he called us like, come on, come quickly. So we all ran. Uh, and then there we saw this, uh, that point I showed you, uh, ledge. That is where he was sitting. And he was sleeping. And uh, so we watched for 15 minutes. And then he said like, OK, I'm tired of sitting like this. I want to turn around. So he got up and looked around like this and turned around again and then he decided to sleep back again. <laughs> he was sleeping. And we said like, you should be there. tomorrow morning we'll go and see. But by that time it had become quite dark. So by that time it was, next time we didn't see anything. So thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed.